I'm fourth generation military. Not only was it my turn, but uh, growing up little, I always thought one of the greatest jobs you could have is serving your country. I joined the Army in November 97 and went to uh, basic training in Fort Benning, Georgia. From there, my first duty station was at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Uh, from there, I went to Korea, came right back to Fort Campbell, uh, deployed to Iraq, and was injured nine months into my de first deployment. I was in the town of Telafar, Iraq, which is in northern Iraq, uh, in October 2003. We were doing our uh, second patrol, and it was about 10 o'clock at night, and we were involved in a vehicle ambush. Uh, I was in the lead vehicle. Uh, the first uh, rocket propel grenade hit the back of my vehicle. Uh, we got out return fire. Um, a second rocket came in and exploded right in front of me and uh, essentially amputated my leg right on the spot. When I very first was injured, uh, I got the wind knocked out of me, so I just thought I got shot in my body armor. Uh, I've heard from other soldiers that have been deployed and, and, and uh, been in gunfights that if you get hit in the plates, it's probably gonna break a rib or two, but just kind of get up and walk it off. So essentially that's what I tried to do, but I couldn't stand up. So I kind of laid there for a second. I was like, okay, let's, while we're laying here, let's, you know, check out my hands, hands are good, no blood, all right. So I reached down and grabbed my left leg and it's kind of bloody and I was thinking, oh, that's not good. So I reached down and grabbed my right leg and there was really nothing there to grab. And I kind of fell a little bit further down and it was, uh, a hot mess, I could say. Um, so uh, I crawled back over to the vehicle uh, where my guys picked me up, loaded me up. We finished the fight, two vehicles drove me out and two vehicles stayed to clean up. And um, from there, I got to the aid station that we had in town and uh, the PA there got me squared away enough to fly to the field hospital in Mosul. Uh, from there, they did surgeries and whatnot, got me stable to fly to launch stool and I ended up at Walter Reed about 10 days later. By the looks on everybody's faces, I was in I was in real bad shape when I was when they were first working on me. I didn't know until I woke up out of out of a, a coma at Walter Reed, and I looked down and my leg was gone. And you know, being around other wounded veterans that were missing arms and legs, it kind of really you know it was kind of normal to see because you're surrounded and, and immersed by it. Uh, it wasn't until the very first time I stood up on a prosthesis, uh, looking in the mirror, that it kind of you know reality hit me in the face. Was like, okay, well this is what life is now. Yeah, I grew up playing sports all the way through high school um, and, you know, being in the military, you're, you know, especially on the infantry side, we're very active. If we're not out training, we're playing sports or kind of screwing around. So um, when I first lost my leg, I was like, well, now what am I going to do? Like, I can't run, I can't ruck, I can't do things that an infantryman needs to do. And all I wanted to do was go back and be with my guys. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't in the cards, but through the occupational program there at Walter Reed and the physical therapy program at Walter Reed, uh, they would bring in people that were adaptive athletes. Uh, the very first one that I remember is John Register, uh, USA track and field, USA swimming, uh, two-time Paralympian, two-time Paralympic medalist. And he started talking about Paralympics and I was thinking, wow, I remember watching the Olympics growing up, but uh, now, you know, with the opportunity to possibly be one, um, and it just worked out that I got an invite to try out for the Army shooting team. So thankfully the stars aligned and it worked out. I, I'm more busy now being a retiree than I was on active duty. So um, I'm very fortunate I get, I get to coach uh, high school athletes in strength and conditioning and football. Uh, and also, uh, so I coach athletes year round. And then I train myself and I train family members. So I'm always busy doing something. And uh, I try to stay active as I can. Um, sometimes it's too much. So when I can go to the gym and concentrate on my sports or go to the, go practice archery or go practice throwing, uh, to be successful, I have to focus on those events. And so I can shut the world out, even though I can be surrounded by people, but I can shut the world out for that hour and a half, two hours. And it's, it's very, it's almost like meditating. From here, uh, my, my goals for this Warrior Games is to um, help the younger athletes get to their potential and help them stay focused on what they're trying to do. And, but at the same time, encouraging them to take a step back and take in where we're at. For some of them, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And being around all the other services, the other countries that are here, and to represent the Army, uh, it, it's, it's a big deal. And a lot of athletes get so focused on what they're doing, they don't enjoy themselves. And I, I'm trying to encourage them to take a step back, take it in, go watch a sport, and just go talk to other athletes that may be going through the same injuries or the same healing process as you they might have a, a technique or a coping mechanism that you're not aware of. So it could make them, you know, heal faster, heal better. Uh, so I'm trying to encourage the younger athletes to do that. And then for me personally, I'd, 
I would really like to compete in the Invictus Games again. So the more success, successful that I am at that, uh, I'll get another shot at Invictus. Uh, what motivates me is uh, I had some friends that didn't make it back from Iraq and I want to make them proud. Of course, I want to make my family proud, but I want to set a good example for uh, the athletes I train at home and for, for my football athletes. Uh, I want them to see like, hey, you know, if he can do it, I can do it. And if, if I can inspire them to be better and push themselves uh, past their comfort zone, uh, then, I'm, then I'm doing it right. Looking back, um, I'm very thankful that I had the support of faith, family, and friends to get me through uh, the low points. Um, yeah, I'm bummed out I lost my leg, but it could have been a lot worse. There's guys that I met that had a lot worse than me. And I, you know, I, medically speaking, I shouldn't be sitting here right now. Uh, I should have passed away. But thankfully, the, the, the PA that worked on me and the, the surgeons that worked on me in Mosul and the doctors and nurses I had at Walter Reed and, and Launch Show were the absolute best in the world. Um, without them, I wouldn't be sitting here. And uh, so I'm very thankful that I'm still here to enjoy the little things in life.